Hey friends, my name is C and welcome to a new video for IGCSC Geography. And today we have a video on settlement, which is on 1.6 urban settlements. And here's the specification from the website. And in this video, we have one case study, which is an urban area or urban areas, which will focus on New York in USA. So starting with urban land use, we have the different key terms. Urban land use is quite um, straightforward, which is basically a simplified model of the land use in the, in the urban area, or like a town or city. And for urban land use, geographers have spent a lot of time modeling and simplifying cities to explain how they work. And this relates to their site and situation, which we explored into what they meant in the last video. But just for recap, site is basically the immediate area in which the settlement is built on, like for example, the settlement is built on flat land. Flat land is the site. Where a situation is the relative location of the settlement to the things nearby it. For example, it's close to a transport link, like a road, or like rivers. So we have land value. The value of the land, which is the bid rent, varies with different land use. For example, the retail land use are attracted to more expensive central areas. For example, in the CBD, which stands for the Central Business District. And also the price of the land depends on factors like how close it is to the center of a city or accessibility to public transport or the size of land available. And then we have more notes. And we looked into previous videos and urbanization is when there's a great proportion of people or population living in urban areas. And the people basically move from rural areas to urban areas. And the opposite of that would be counter urbanization. And more economically developed countries or MEDCs, like MEDC, have a greater urbanization rate than less economically developed countries or LEDC. And MEDCs are basically synonymous to more like um, developed country, and LEDCs is like synonymous to like developing countries. And there are six main urban land use zones in uh, in an urban urban area or urban land, and they are the central business district, the CBD, residential areas, open spaces, industrial areas, entertainment areas, and transport routes. So we'll look into CBD first. CBD is a commercial and economic center of the city, and it is the area that is the most accessible to the public transport. And the most expensive part or like uh, area of a city is called the PLVI, or the Peak Land Value Intersection and it's usually in the CBD. And features in the CBD include a concentration of public transport and offices and vertical zoning, where basically uh, it's like split inside, uh, let's say a building. Oops, let's say it's like a, a building. The bottom floor is, let's say, uh, shops and top floors are um, like offices. And you can often find like this in, let's say, shopping mall. Well, it's quite common that the, sh um, the bottom floor is for shopping, as mentioned, and top floor is offices. And then we have residential zones, and housing are generally split into high-density housing and low-density housing. So high-density and low-density, basically the difference is that how many people are living in that area. So low-density housing could be, like, let's say, like a semi-D or like a semi-detached, detached housing or bungalow, where high-density could be an apartment right here. As mentioned here, high density housing is normally found close to the CBD where land is expensive. So instead of moving like building outwards, like let's say the land, instead of building instead of building like outwards like this as bigger homes, because the land is expensive, therefore uh, contractors or people be, tend to build upwards. Which that's why you find a lot of apartments in CBD because this is basically high density housing. And the opposite of this will be low density housing, where pe where like it's usually further away from the CBD where land is cheaper. So instead of building upwards, people build sideways where they expand like sideways. So you see bigger houses um away from the CBD. So we have the land use model in MEDCs or more economically developed countries. So we have the Burgess concentric model right here. And concentric just means arranged in circles. So we have the center, which is the, the CBD, right? 
and Burgess, this person, assumed that new migrants to a city moved into inner city areas where housing was cheapest and closest to the source of employment, which is the CBD, like the blue, blue dot right here. And as people gain more wealth, in, uh, as Burgess believed, uh, as people gain more wealth, people move away from the inner city to, uh, let's say, outer area where land is cheaper so they can build bigger houses like a bungalow instead of living in an apartment. And commercial areas, for example, retailers and offices are, in, are located in the CBD because they need a higher threshold population. And CBD is basically where um, the most activity happen, right? And the manufacturing zone is next to the CBD, for example, in the red uh, ring right here, number two, because they can be transported to the CBD easily to minimize shipping costs. Because let's say if we were, if there's a factory that located, like let's say, in this zone right here, it would take a lot of money to transfer from, from the zone 5A, let's say 5A, to 1, right? So if we if it were to be located here in 2, uh, in 2 right here, it's just right next to the CBD. And there's also another land use model in MEDC, which is called the Hoyt Sector Model. And it looks quite different to the Burgess Concentric Model. And the Hoyt model arranges or puts surfaces into sectors rather than concentric rings. And we have the CBD right here in the center as well. But the factories and industries are located like let's say in sector like this. Then we have the different like let's say the working class housing like here. And the different middle class housing. And the commuter zone or the high class housing right here. So we have some notes here. Buffer zone is a zonal area that lies between two or more areas. Like between, like between three and four, there could be a buffer zone. And here's a, like an important note where certain land use zones are separated from each other. For example, high class residential and industrial zones because they do not mix. However, that might not be the case every time because you might see like let's say high class residential areas next to an industrial zone, but that, that's very rare. And then instead of MEDCs, we'll look into LEDCs now, which is less economically developed countries. And here's the model for um, land use model for LEDC. At the center as well, there's CBD as well. But around the CBD, you can see it's actually high, uh, high cost housing, right? And moving away, you can see it's uh, lower cost housing right here. That we have the, you have the favelas, which are basically almost like shanty towns. Then we have the industry or manufacturing industry going into the CBD. And the reason why the high cost housing is at the center, so that means I mean like around the CBD, is because LEDs might not have good transportation links. So people or like rich people or wealthy people who work in the CBD would like to locate close to the CBD to work, right? So they would locate around the CBD so they can get to work easily. And many squatter settlements, like let's say low residential areas, like this one right here, will also be found near hillside and rivers. And manufacturing areas, as mentioned, like the industry, tend to be near or along transport routes to the CBD. Then we have rural urban fringe, and it's basically the boundary area of a town or city where new building is changing land use from rural to urban. So basically, rural urban fringe is where rural area meets urban area. That's quite simple. So we have a photo here. We have urban area because more like houses are built here. And we have the rural area here where it's basically untouched land like hills and you know, nice plains and agriculture. And what's between them is the rural urban fringe. Here's a quick note. There are many pressure on the rural urban fringe due to many reasons. For example, more housing right here, and pressure on transport as population in the boundary increases, and pressure on building more recreational or entertainment areas. And then we have out of town shopping centers. We have the different key terms like hypermarkets and out of town location, which basically just means uh, like away from the town. And here we have two quite important, um, quite important terms. We have the greenfield site and the brownfield site. And it's quite important that you can, and you can use these terms in your exam and in your answers. So greenfield site is an area of agricultural land or some other undeveloped site that is a potential location for commercial development or industrial projects, but has not yet been developed. Whereas brownfield site is an, a, is an area or site 
that has previously been used but has become derelict. So it must be made safe so that housing can be built on it. So it sounds quite confusing but let me just explain this. So Greenfield site, uh, let me just um, like say Greenfield right here, is where we have this area of land where it's untouched, right? Like undeveloped. Um, sorry. Where it's untouched, let's say this is like grassland, right? Or agriculture land. It's untouched and people want to like build things, uh, build buildings on it or build shopping, cent shopping centers and it's regarded as greenfield site. Or they could, or they could, build, how, they could like build houses, right? Whereas brownfield site is where let's say there's an existing building there already. That's just like building. So let's say if this building were to be like a offices, offices for a company and if the company chooses to discontinue the building and let's say the building is like empty, people would like to build houses on it and this is regarded as a brownfield site because this, the site has already previously been used to, in this, in this case, build buildings or offices. And here are some notes. Construction firms are now focusing on building superstores, hypermarkets and out-of-town shopping centers. And these are located on Greenfield site because they are out of town where it's, let's say, rural areas where there are more Greenfield sites. And then we have some problems of urban growth. And there are many problems, for example, pollution, inequality, prices and housing issue, and traffic congestion. And we'll first look at pollution. And this is split into air pollution. There's air pollution in the area because there are more cars. And there's noise pollution because more cars can cause us like road traffic noises. There's water pollution where factories might discharge pollutants into rivers which will decrease the water quality and might cause the spread of diseases. As well as light pollution where there are a lot of um, like buildings in the city center where it has light so it will cause light pollution. So here we have like a photo of how light pollution varies. Where there's basically no light pollution to where there's maximum light pollution. No, number 8. And then there's inequality. And there are contrasts between the rich and the poor in all cities. And their highlights are mentioned in the urban land use model in the previous few slides. And one way to show, uh, to show inequality is using the Lorenz curve, which will look more in theme 3. right? And this shows the proportion of income that the rich and the poor have. So we have the Lorenz curve, right? If it were to be a straight line, it shows, sorry, it's meant to cross the origin. If it's a straight line, it shows, like a, it has a slope of 1, which, uh, which represents perfect inequality or wealth distribution, but that's not often the case. And then we have prices and housing issue. Land prices have increased, which drives shops and businesses out of the CBD because the price or the rental price is too high. And this means there's an increased demand for housing as people move to urban areas for better job opportunities. And there's also an increased demand for housing as people move to urban areas for more job opportunities. But this increased demand for housing will lead to problems such as overcrowding, unequal distribution, and corruption. And then we have traffic congestion, which basically means there's an increased number of um, cars in the, on the road, which will lead to traffic congestion. Oops, this is um, not completed. Let me just, let me just ignore this sentence right here. So here we have the case study, which is an urban area or urban areas. And we'll look at New York in the United States. So here's some note on, where, on New York. New York City land area covers 825 kilometers squared and it has a population of 8.5 million in 2021. So here's a photo of New York City and we have the land use. So the distribution of commercial land use is dominated by two areas. There's Midtown Manhattan and there's Downtown Manhattan. And they have different, um, generally they have different use. Like Midtown Manhattan is mainly for shops whereas downtown Manhattan is mainly for the center for finance and banking. And most of the city, like New York City's uh, 3.6 million jobs are in the commercial areas and they occupy less than 4% of the city's land. And in New York City, there's public facilities and institutions, for example, schools and hospitals, and they are spread throughout the city, occupying 7% of the city's land. And they are more percentage. And in the exam, it's quite important that you know these percentages. Say 4%, 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 
like million jobs, percent, 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 because these statistics are important in your answer to support your argument. Then we have population. New York's population is declining and changing, which is quite surprising. And the total population has fallen over 10% in the last decade. And the middle class population has fallen by 2 million in the past 20 years. And here's some, uh, some notes on the inner city area. High density housing in this area in places like Harlem and the South Bronx mainly live in by lower income families. And as we mentioned in the previous few slides, High density housing basically means like, say, apartments. And inner areas are declining both in terms of population and employment. And this could uh, be due to rising land, uh, land prices or like less job opportunities. And quite surprisingly that up to 25% of its citizens in New York City live in poverty. And here's some more statistics to back it up. And here are the problems that they are facing. Problems arise from high living standards and high living costs, as mentioned. That's why it causes a decline in population and employment. And as well as changes in population structure and the counter urbanization or movement of lower income families into the inner city. And there's an increased traffic congestion and air pollution as well. And the locals feel that their standard of living is deteriorating, which is expected because there are more cars, which causes more air pollution or that pollution which causes more traffic congestion, which will decrease the standard of living. And lastly, here's some solutions or solution to like all the problems in New York City, or at least some of the problems. We have the green energy projects. And New York City is now employing a greater use of green energy or renewable energy. And an example of this is the Statue of Liberty and other federal buildings are now using wind power instead. And there are tax breaks for builders of energy efficient buildings, as well as tax exemptions for electric vehicles or EVs. And there's also some statistics here. There's also a solid waste management program which uses train to export 90% of the city's waste as 12,000 tons of household waste. And lastly, there's a greater use of public transport which would decrease the number of vehicles in the city center or in the city which will hopefully decrease the traffic congestion and will once again raise the quality of living back up in New York City. And that's it for this video on settlement. I hope you all enjoyed this video and if you need any more learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check my website in the description or you can type it out in your browser at www.emitseeasy.com And I hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next video. Here's to learning made easy.